Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we are going to be doing another foundation wear test. I picked up the House Labs Triclone Skin Tech Foundation. So this is it. Um, as you can see, the shade's probably a little bit deep. I got medium neutral, as I say, medium neutral 370. And usually like medium neutral shades work really well for me, but this is kind of deep. To me, this is more like tan medium neutral, but we're going to see if we can make it work. If not, then I'm just going to take it back to Sephora, return it, and then get the right shade. This packaging, you guys, this is very weighted. It feels extremely luxurious. The bottle is glass. The lid is plastic, and I think it has a pump. Yeah, so it also has a pump, which I like. I cannot stand it when foundations do not come with a pump. I know the Estee Lauder one, you have to buy the pump separate, which I find very annoying. I don't understand that, but this one comes with a pump, so we're already excited about that. I also picked up the new setting powder. This is the Bio Blurring Loose Setting Powder. I just picked mine up in Translucent. Translucent is usually what I go for. The packaging on the powder, however, this is plastic. It doesn't feel as luxurious as the foundation. Let's go ahead and read some of the claims for the foundation so we know what we're working with. The price range is $45. There are 51 shades, which I think is really good for a first time foundation. It says it has a patent pending fermented Arnica formula, 860% more potent than conventional Arnica. Helps to visibly reduce redness and irritation, even skin tone, protects against uh, environmental stress. It has a bioferment seven complex, which is patent pending, bioengineered antioxidant rich, co rich complex that promotes anti-inflammation, anti-aging, protection from oxidative and environmental stress. So, it's supposed to help with any stress the environment may put on our skin. Their Intel Zen 7 Complex is a proprietary blend of medicinal herbs that works synergistically to promote skin healing and calming. So these are the features. It is infused with 20 plus skincare ingredients, including their patent pending fermented arnica, made with proprietary complexes, medium buildable coverage, it brightens and even skin tones, long wear performance, dermatologist and clinically tested, non-toxic, non-communogenic, non-acnogenic, suitable for all skin types, made in Korea. That one really impressed me, which means it's definitely going to be a very nice, clean formula. Made without PEGs and 2600 plus other questionable ingredients. Clean, cruelty-free, and vegan. So all of the good things. I don't see like a wear time, so it's not saying it's got like a 16-hour wear time or anything. It's not claiming to blur or mattify or, you know, do any kind of pour, you know, blurring or anything like that. So all the claims sound really good. When I first saw that House Labs is coming out with a new foundation, I definitely wanted to try it. So that is what we're going to be doing now i do have some redness like around my nose i have a little bit of a breakout around my chin so it'll be nice to see how well you know this does to cover all of that up the only thing that i'm wearing on my skin as far as primer is the silicone free priming moisturizer from good molecules which is basically skincare i don't want to put anything on my skin that might actually affect the formula itself so i decided you know to go against wearing like an actual primer so let's go ahead and get to applying this foundation and then we're going to set everything down with the powder. I have another video that I'm going to be filming afterwards. We'll do a check-in and then a couple more check-ins throughout the day. I have my Total Face Sponge from e.l.f. This is my absolute favorite way to apply foundation. What I'm going to do, just in case it is too deep and I need to return it, I don't want to like squeeze it from the pump. So I'm just going to take it and just kind of put a couple of drops onto my, my uh, sponge this way just so that I can test it out without actually messing up the pump itself all right so let's start applying oh yeah this is definitely too deep i don't understand why it's called medium neutral this is very very clearly more like a tan neutral it's also leaning very yellow to me. I don't really see this as being a neutral tone. I noticed when I was looking at the shades on the website, you guys, trying to shade match online is so freaking hard. When you actually look at it, you're looking at the swatch, you're looking at the bottle, the model, it's not matching. Like the model looks like she's like her skin tone is very yellow, but the foundation that she's wearing, the swatch, looks pink. I don't understand. It was so confusing trying to pr find a proper shade. All right, so this is after 
being applied to just one side of the face. As you can see, it hasn't really covered my blemish down here and the redness on my nose is still there. I'm going to go ahead and apply it to the other side and then we'll see how well it works to like layer up to see if I can add, you know, a second, just a, little, just a light coat like over the areas I've already applied. I knew when I got the bottle in the mail that the shade was probably going to be a little bit too deep, which is fine, but I still wanted to at least try it out so that, you know, I could try out the formula, at least see what how it's going to perform, you know, how it's going to wear throughout the day. And then just go to Sephora and switch it out for the proper shade. All right, so this is it applied to both sides. And the first thing that I'm noticing is this foundation is super glowy. Definitely not matte, not semi-matte. This has a lot of glow to it. Yeah, this is very dewy looking. <laughs> I have oily skin, so I prefer a more matte to semi-matte formula. But, you know, we'll see what it looks like once the powder is set down. So I'm going to take just a little bit more, just a little bit more on my sponge. And I'm just going to apply it directly to the blemishes. I'm going to see if I can build up some coverage over. Okay, so yeah, it's definitely buildable. So that is good. I'm going to take some... Just blend it down my neck a little bit. I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> We're going to be at home cleaning. Like I said, I have another video i got to film. So, yeah. We're going to be... We're not going to be going out looking like we're like super tan in the face and nowhere else. Applied a little bit of my LA Colors Ultimate Coverage Concealer in Golden. I just put a little bit under the eyes. I put a little bit around my nose. Kind of down the center of my face and like a little bit in here. So, let's go on ahead and read the claims on this powder and then set all of the shine down. I just realized I forgot to tell you guys what time it is. I'm actually getting this started a little bit late. It's 12.30 now, but I'm going to keep it on for at least eight hours so we get, you know, a good wear time. All right, so this is what it's saying about the powder. This is a loose powder. It's $38, so it's a little bit less expensive than the foundation, which one, I'm pretty sure the packaging, you know, had something to do with that. It's a clean, skincare-infused, talc-free, loose-setting powder that blurs, controls shine, and sets makeup So, It's claiming that the powder is blurring. It's supposed to control shine throughout the day, sets down makeup, which most powders do. House Tech powered with fermented arnica and plant squalene, so this also has arnica in it. Five complexion enhancing shades, including one universal, and the universal, I'm assuming, is the translucent, which is the one. That I got. So I think that's all of the claims on that. So let's go ahead and set our face. Take off the top. This is what it's looking like on the inside. I haven't actually taken the little plastic or paper off yet. It has a little paper thing. We're going to pull that off, a little ASMR. And it has one of those little mesh tops in there. Similar to the one from Urban Decay, the All Nighter Softening Loose Setting Powder. And I think the Uma, the new Uma Beauty Powder is the same way. Is it even about? Yeah. I think the new Oma Beauty Powder is also got similar packaging. So I'm going to take my sponge again. I like to set my powder with a sponge. I feel like it just really helps to kind of press everything in. Uh, real quickly though, the foundation looks nice. I will say it does look nice. Like it's very skin-like even though the shade is off. Like I am wearing a shade that's too deep. It still looks pretty decent. Like I'm not... I'm not mad at it. The finish is actually looking kind of nice. It's extremely dewy, which is not something that I normally go for because I do have oily skin, but just right now, upon first application, it is looking good. So let's go on ahead and apply the powder. I'm going to take my sponge. I'm just going to kind of press it over the mesh. So we're getting a decent amount of powder in here. And I'm just going to start applying. Let's do our pores first. Oh! Okay. That's actually blurring in here. My only thing is that's supposed to be translucent, but it is definitely laying down some color. But it is blurring. Ooh, I don't know how well you guys can see on the camera if you guys are seeing what I'm seeing in person, but this looks nice. It has blurred everything down. It looks so smooth. It looks so soft. It's definitely taken down a lot of the shine of the foundation, but it doesn't look like drying and like super matte. Wow. Okay, right. So far, 
I am impressed. This is a very, very pretty finish. And like I said, even though it's not supposed to be adding color, I can definitely see color being added. Like, it's definitely lightening the foundation. I am finding it very difficult to just really get up in here with this mesh. I mean, do you see the powder kind of flying everywhere? Um, I think what I'm going to do is see if I can shake some into this lid and see if it works a little bit better. Can we do that? Um, no, it's not, it's not really coming out, so. Ooh, it might be better used with a brush. I have this one here. This is from Shop Miss A, AOA Studio. This is the F21. It's a highlighting brush, but I like to use it to apply powder in certain areas, so I'm going to take it and press it in. Yeah, I'm definitely getting more powder onto the brush than I was getting onto the sponge. So we're going to, I guess we'll just finish off the face that way. So the foundation and the powder have been applied and just upon first application, everything is looking really good. It's looking very skin-like. My skin is looking very blurred. I am loving the finish that this powder is giving, but I will say it's supposed to be translucent. That's the shade that I got, but it definitely has color. It has definitely lightened the foundation. I mean, this is what the foundation was originally looking like, and you can see it has definitely changed the color. So there's definitely color to this. It's not completely translucent. If you have a deeper skin tone, this is probably going to look ashy on you. So just to kind of make note of that, you know, I would probably not get this one if you are on that deeper range. Also, I find this little mesh thing to be very messy. I found it messy with that Urban Decay powder, and I'm not really digging on it with this one either. I may end up just ripping that completely out so that I can actually use this powder the way that I want to. But yeah, those are just little notes that I'm taking just from first application. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to go film my other video. Once I have finished filming that, we will come back and do our first It's been about check. an hour and a half since I finished applying the foundation and the powder. I have finished applying my makeup for my other video. I don't know if that one is going up before or after this one. If it's already up, then I'll link it down below. If not, then be looking out for it. So far, the foundation and the powder is looking nice, but I am definitely starting to see a little bit of oily breakthrough in my T-zone. The powder doesn't seem to be controlling the shine as much as I would have hoped, and it's only been a couple of hours. I'm going to check back in about maybe 4 or 5 o'clock, see what it's looking like then, and do one final check-in at the end of the day. So the makeup has been on for about 5 hours at this point. And so far, it is looking really good. When I did the first check-in, I was mentioning how shiny everything was looking and that I was really starting to see like a shiny breakthrough, but I think that wasn't actually my lighting and how it was looking under the filming lights because when I stopped filming and then I like went in the bathroom and looked, and just kind of like looking at it in the natural light, not looking like it did underneath the filming lights. It was actually looking smooth, blurred, a slight bit of a shine but for the most part looking really really good and it's looking really good now you can see a little bit of shine coming through but i will say this foundation and powder so far is really holding up well i am super impressed i'm also noticing that even though the shade looked really dark in the bottle after you know fully applying it setting it down with a powder as you can see it is looking really good like you can't really see a difference like it's not looking like it's five shades darker than me it actually looks really really nice so so far yeah i'm impressed we're gonna come back in a, in a few hours and do our final check-in for the day we are doing our final check-in. It is about 7.30, so it's been about three hours. Definitely seeing a little bit more shine, but overall, I think it's looking pretty good. I'm actually pretty impressed. The foundation and the powder overall are still holding up well. Any other time, I would have touched up a couple of times, but I did want to see what the finish was going to look like at the end of the day without me doing any touch-ups, and I think it looks good. And the foundation is not oxidizing or anything still looking pretty good. I don't know what that means as far as the shade matching because like I said, the shade, I have it right here, you can see it looks super dark, but blended out with that powder applied, 
looks like a perfect match. Like you can't even tell. So I, I, I don't know what to say about the shade matching system, but that doesn't seem to be very good. I do feel like they need to improve that. But overall, I think this wear test went pretty well. The foundation I'm happy with. I really don't have any complaints as far as the finish and the wear time and all that. If you've used this foundation, let me know down in the comments how it worked for you, what your skin type is, how the formula worked on your skin. Let me know down in the comments. You know, it's very helpful for anybody else as well who may not have oily skin like I do. If you're new to my channel and you're not already subscribed, I would love it if you would consider hitting subscribe and join my little family. Make sure you tap the notification bell so you'll be notified of any videos coming up in the future. You can also follow me on my other socials. I'm on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Be safe, take care of yourself, and I'll see you in the next one.